big media interest, of course, in Michigan and whether or not this is the year that the maize and blue jump to the top of the East Division. Karan Higdon is with us now, as is safety Tyree Kennel and defensive end Chase Winovich. Guys, before we get into your team and this season ahead, I want to talk to you a little bit about the trip to France. Jim Harbaugh was up here earlier and telling us about everything he felt like educationally you guys got out of it and experiential learning. What did you take from it? What, what's the big thing that will stick with you throughout your life? So I actually missed France due to graduation. I graduated oh, okay. early, so congrats to that. But I was able to go on a wrong trip, and I'm pretty sure that, you know, the Paris-France trip was nothing less than that. And I know those guys had a great experience and something that was going to stick with them the rest of their life. Before I ask the other two of you the same thing, were you there? I was yeah. there. You're both yeah, there. Yeah, okay, yeah. all right. Tyree, tell me what you I, took out of it. I mean, it was very exciting, you know, to go over to a different country with your team and just to learn about new things and go through historical buildings and, and museums. It was, it was great. I took everything in. And it was fun to be around my teammates in a new environment. So one thing you saw that will stick with you? Yeah, I mean, just, just the historical pieces that, that meant so much to their country. Uh, it's very special to know that, you know that people take so much pride in things like that. So, you know, I just try to take it all in. How about you, Chase? From start to finish, honestly, it was just, you know, a holistically uh, amazing experience put on by everybody. You know, big thanks to everybody that was involved with that. But um, I'm very thankful for that experience. And it, there was no football involved, so it was in our off time. So, honestly, it was just uh, a matter of bonding with our teammates and uh, seeing all these historical sites in, in Paris. And, you know, for a lot of people, this may be their only trip going over there. Um, so, coming back, I think people were more motivated to work out. And uh, I think a lot of that will translate to the field this fall. Well, you talk about translating to the field, and that's obviously what I know you guys are interested in, what fans are interested in. I don't think it's any great secret that you haven't met external expectations, and I know you guys probably feel like you haven't met internal expectations, not beating Ohio State, not beating Michigan State on a consistent basis. How do you get to that point where Michigan football becomes what it has been historically as the winningest program in college football history? I think it starts off with focusing on, on what's in front of us. We got to attack the spring. Then from the spring, we got to attack summer workouts. From there, we got to prepare for fall camp. And then there, we got to win the first game of the season. The first game of the season is going to define us as Michigan Wolverines and who we are for this upcoming season. And I think we go into Notre Dame, handle our business. I think that'll be a great leap into furthermore to come. What's your take, Tyreek? Just trusting each other. You know, the process is so long. You know, the season's so long. You know, we want to get through camp first, get our camp healthy. You know, and then, you know, go into our opener in South Bend and be as best shape as we can and be mentally prepared and be ready. Uh, so, you know, we want to start off by winning the opener and then take each game at a time. And I think if we trust each other down the road, we're going, it's going to pay off. Is this a motivator, Chase, the fact that it hasn't gone as well as you guys would have wanted it to? I mean, is this something you talk about amongst yourselves? For sure. That's definitely part of the dialect. And, when, you know, when we break it up after workouts and even before um, just the conversations we have with a teammate, I mean, it's, it's almost embarrassing uh, for us. You know, it just doesn't represent uh, the work that we've put in and, and uh, just like – where you know we should be uh so there's a mismatch honestly and um i think Karan was pointing out you know there's things that we had to do in order to have a successful season there's boxes that we had to check uh we had a great you know winter conditioning program we had a great spring ball we you know we've had great summer conditioning uh now like we're looking forward to the next challenge which is having a productive and uh just a great camp and if we could do that honestly i, I don't think uh, there's anybody outside of our team that's going to stop us. I mean, it's mistakes we made last year. A lot of them were viewed uh, as an internal mistakes, you know, self wounds. Uh, where this year, I think we can we can capitalize and, and learn from those mistakes. And uh, I'm excited for that. So that we have a lot to look forward to. Uh, you two both mentioned Notre Dame. To have Notre Dame looming out there, to know that your first game, and you had this last year too. You had a a big time opponent as your first game on your schedule so this is not unusual but how does that change the tenor of off-season workouts and then heading into camp chase i'd start with yeah, you okay and, great you yeah, that, that's on. awesome yeah. yeah for me personally um like i said it doesn't matter you know who you put out in front of us um the preparation and everything doesn't it, it stays the same i mean from from day one to week one uh to winter conditioning to summer conditioning like uh if you're a champion and and you you know you work like one uh, the process is, is, you know, the exact same. So uh, I'm excited for this opportunity. Like I said, um, you know, it, it presents, you know, unique challenges, and it definitely motivates us, you know, being a rivalry game. 
Um, but it'll be fun. I don't know what Tyree has to say about that. But I mean, like he just said, just excited to be in a, a game like that. You know, the rivalry's been gone for a couple years, and, you know, we get to, to play it in the one last time you know, for us being our last year. So, I mean, this has been the best offseason we had since I've been here, and I'm, I'm extremely excited for us. I'm, ex I'm ready to get to camp with the guys and start competing, and, you know, and I'm ready to get to South Bend and start our season. How about you, Karan? I think, you know, both these guys open up a great factor is that it's a simple fact you can't overlook who it is. And I think one of the main things that a lot of teams do, is more specifically what we did last year, is we looked at our big games and didn't really look at the games that we didn't think were going to be big. And that was a mistake we made. I think this year we've definitely looked at each and every team as an individual, and we're going to prepare for each and every team as high as expectations as we can. And we're going to treat every team the same, as if they were champions, because we want to be champions. That's where we want to be at the end of the season. So we got to attack Notre Dame the same way we would attack SMU or Ohio State or Michigan State. And as long as we take each and every week the same way and come out with a W, I think we'll be in good shape. I want to focus a bit on the running game, which is obviously your area. You guys, it seemed like against the better teams on your schedule last year, at times you struggled to run the ball. Against the lower level opposition, the teams that were below 500 teams, you were able to establish the run game. So how do you get the running attack to the point where game in and game out, you know it's something you can depend on? I think it starts with the guys up front. And then the guys behind. I think everybody has to do their job. All 11 guys got to be on the same page. I think Coach Harbaugh did a great job of adding additions to our, our offensive team and making sure that they were able to simplify our offense and put us in the best position to do less thinking and more playing. I think we've had a great offseason. Um, guys are mentally tough. Guys are ready. Guys are ready to battle, motivated, determined. And we're all working together and ready to kick it off this year. You mentioned the offensive line. It seems to me that's an area where Michigan has fallen a little bit short lately and people haven't spoken about that as much as maybe they've talked about the quarterback spot or the running back spot chase you go up against this offensive line every day give us a sense of how you've seen it develop yeah it's definitely taken you know almost leaps and bounds from where i saw it last year um i think two things i think a leadership role i think uh, guys are starting to come in and really identify with themselves as like they are the face of this offensive line and and recognize like you know, the pressure, a lot of it is on them, just as it is on the defensive line for a defense. Um, the pressure is on them. And I think, you know, Coach Warner's done a great job of uh, implementing, you know, almost like a simpler uh, protection scheme. And I think guys have really bought into, like, from a defensive perspective, like, really bought into. Uh, you know, like their roles and their fits. And uh, for me in spring ball, I didn't notice as many times like where I'd come into the backfield and, uh, you know, almost like unimposed, like there's just a blow in protection. Uh, where this time, like even if I would win, you know, it'd still be at least someone was in a position to block me. Um, and I think that'll that'll do a lot of things for opening up the pass game and uh, ultimately opening up the run game in our offense as a whole. Tyree, you have a unique point of view on the quarterbacks, much as Chase does on the offensive line. You go against them in practice. Everyone wants to know about Shea Patterson, so give us an idea of what his skill set looks like. I mean, he's great. I mean, he has a swag to himself that he brings. Um, you know, from being back around I see pretty much the whole offense, and, you know, he, he brings a lot to the table. And not just him, also Brandon Peters, you know, McCaffrey, Joe Milton, they're all doing great. They all had great springs, and um, I can't wait till fall and they all compete for a spot. But the offense is extremely improved uh, throughout the whole throughout the whole line, the offensive line, the receivers, the running backs. I'm excited for the offense, you know, and I'm excited for for all of us. So can't wait to get to camp. Well, this defense has been a constant over the last few years, absolutely dominant. Some of it is clearly the players. A huge part of it is the players, but part of it is Don Brown as well. Particularly last year when he crafted your defense around one returning starter. Yeah. What makes him so good? I mean, he's a teacher. He's a, you know, he's going to teach us on and off the field. You know, that's why it's so easy to play for him. He's a very respectful guy. He gets after it, and he wants the best out of us. And, and each week, he's going to put us in the best position to, to succeed with the game plan. So uh, it's, it's fun playing with him. He's always putting us in a great position. And, uh, you know, we, we play off his energy. You know, we play fast, play, play strong, and, and that's what we try to do as a defense. Well, there is amazing talent as well, and I think the front seven is where it really stands out, Chase, with yeah. your group. Let's take yourself out of it. Yeah. Uh, among the rest of the guys on the defensive line, who is it that makes plays that make you sit back and kind of say, wow, particularly when you're looking at film? I mean, 
particularly like looking at film, like people that say, wow, I mean, Rashawn Gary, obviously, the dude is an absolute freak, uh, freak of nature. Uh, that's no surprise to anybody when he won like uh, biggest freak in college football. Um, but I think this year, like just like speaking in like future tense, um, we got a lot of guys that are going to be up and coming and, and really have turned the corner. You know, back in January, you're not sure like these guys, like how will they step up and how will they take to like, uh, you know, be, be in this new role with Mo departing. Um, and I think people like Aubrey Solomon, Carlo Kemp, uh, Luigi Villain, um, yeah, even Quiddy Pay. Like, there's we just got a lot of guys that have been able to successfully turn that corner. And uh, it's going to be a fun year. We got a lot of depth, and uh, we got a lot of hungry individuals. And yeah. last one for you, Karan. Michigan hasn't had a thousand yard rusher since 2011, which seems crazy. But now you came awfully close <laughs> last did, year. I, I mean, you're six yards away. But how big a motivator is it for you to be that guy? Close isn't good enough, and, uh, you know, having the opportunity to come back and achieve that goal this year is everything for me, and I've been putting in the work, making sure I seize every moment, capitalize every moment, because ultimately, looking back on last year, that's what it came down to. I look at what led up to that. Maybe I missed a rep in, in off-season workouts, or maybe I didn't go as hard in fall camp on a run, or maybe I missed the opportunity during a game that could have changed that element of being a 1,000-yard rusher and having a different conversation right now. So attacking this off-season and this preparation up until our first game is how I've been looking at it, and it's definitely a motivator. And We'll talk next year, and I'll be that 1,000-yard rusher. <laughs> all right. Amen. Great to visit with all three of you, Karan Higdon, Tyree Kennel, Chase Winovich. Thank you for Guys, having thank us. you very Appreciate much. It. Enjoy thank the rest you. of your Appreciate time you. in Chicago.